Welcome, welcome. Kia ora, come in. Kia ora koutou, everyone. Kia ora koutou. So good to see you all here. And we have got a ton of people online. Hello, everyone, online in the online world from New Zealand and all over the world. So hello there. In fact, far more people online than are here today, but it's a good crowd today too. So kia ora koutou. Um, ko Naomi Ingram Tuku Ingwa. I am the Associate Dean of Te Kura Ako Taituka. Uh, ko Ramaroa Te Maunga, ko Mangakahiata Awa, no Taitukaro Aho, uh, Ingari no um, Ukaho, um, uh, Taku Kaika Inaine. Um, so my name is Naomi Ingram. I'm the Associate Dean of Initial Teacher Education here, and I come from Northland. You might have heard that and which is, for those people overseas, it's right at the very top of New Zealand. And now I'm right down the bottom of New Zealand. You are applying to a teaching college at the bottom of New Zealand if you're from overseas, so be aware of that. And um, I live in Warrington, and um, I've got, it's so lovely to have you all here today. So I'll just kind of take a moment to get to know you a little bit before we start properly. Hands up if you're from Northland. Anyone from Northland? Okay, let's go down the country a little bit. Auckland? No? Mm. Down the country. People, in, people online are waving. It's me, it's me. Sorry, you're not here. Um, anyone from sort of north of Wellington? Oh, where are you from? Hawke's Bay. Hawke's Bay. Lovely. What part of Hawke's Bay? Central Hawke's Bay. Okay, that's specific. Anyone from Wellington area? Okay. It's Nelson, Tasman? No, we're going down, 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 down. Anyone from hmm, Christchurch? Excellent, Christchurch. What school was that? That's what they ask. St. Margaret's. Oh, St. Margaret's, know it well. And who's from Dunedin? And anyone, anyone from overseas here? Yep, nice, nice. Okay, so lovely to see you all. And um, what we're going to do today is start with a karakia. So, uh, etu, mitu. And so, um, for those people overseas, a karakia is a way that we open a event or meeting or hui or just spend time together to think about things and it um, adds some wairua to the event and keeps it nice and safe and makes us all come together before we start our, our thing. So, kia hora, so me karakia tato. Kia hora te marino, kia whakapapa, paunamu te moana, kia tere te kārohirohi, i mua, i tōhu arahi, tihei mauri ora. Kia ora, enoho, thank you. So this is a really beautiful, um, I, as I said, I come from Warrington, so that's a, a picture of Blueskin Bay. Um, and um, what I really like about it is it's... Um, it's all about decision making. So it says, let the oceans for your journey be calm and glistening like greenstone, and the shimmering light across the water will guide your journey. It's about making good decisions. So hopefully this will give you enough information for you to make a good decision today. So um, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, it's actually only two weeks since our big tertiary open day. So we actually filled the room so um, on tertiary open day, but this is a sort of catch up one as well for people overseas, but it's also for people who didn't manage to get to the tertiary open day or people already doing their degree. So is anyone already doing their degree? Hands up. Or anyone is still at school? Yep, and someone who's employed and thinking about a new beginning. Anyone there? Awesome. Kia ora. So tonight we're going to talk about why we think teaching is a good journey for you to be on, um, why we think you should do that at, at Otago. We're going to talk about our programs and we're going to give you information about how to apply. It's quite a full-on process and then other options that you can do. We're not just all about teaching at the College of Education. Um, thank you to the parents that came tonight. I warn you now. I have recruited a parent in the past um, to be a teacher, so you might already be teachers, perhaps, but um, it has been known, it will, might happen. So our students in the last couple of years have ranged in age from 19 to 63. So um, it's, we really welcome um, so many different ages and stages. So, and there'll be an opportunity to ask questions as well. So if you're online, 
Um, if you want to ask a question, there'll be an opportunity. We'll answer them at the end. So you can send messages to um, the Otago Education Facebook page. Just send a message, and we've got someone collecting those as we go, and we'll ask questions too. Um, you might be a little bit shy about this, a little bit whakamā about this. You have to answer the, ask the question on a microphone because the international audience or the online audience can hear as well. It's okay. It'll be fine. Just You can belt out Shania Twain if you like at the same time. So we believe that teaching is not just a job or, or work that you do. We believe that it's not even just a career. We believe it is about transformative change. So it is about transformation. So we are that passionate about teaching. So yes, it is a job and a career and things like that, but it's about motivating and empowering happy and healthy learners to make informed decisions and actions at an individual community, at a national and global level. So each of us are individuals that are operating within our communities, and we might have several communities we operate within, we're operating within our wider town or city, our hapu, our iwi, and we're operating in the national sphere, but we're also global citizens. And we believe that good teaching can make a difference through that change in the classroom. And so we believe, in, um, we believe that many people become a teacher um, because of... Um, because they want to make a difference. And so we've, we've actually taken the opportunity to think about some Māori values and... <laughs> kia ora, this is my cue, and I'm hoping I can see into the camera there as well. Um, kia ora ki ka takata ki tāwahi. So just welcome to the um, people who are overseas. Ko waio, uh, ko... Oh. Pukakura te mauka, ko otako te awa, ko um, otako te marae, ko um, awarua te hun, runa ko hoki, uh, e noho anau ki otako, uh, ko uh, rua hiki ki te hapu, ko waitaha, ka te māmoe kaitahu o ku iwi. Ko Rachel Martin tō kuikua, he mani pik, manu piki Māori ahau ki ko nei. Um, my role is... A little bit similar, I'm a, um, Associate Dean Māori, in case you might not have noticed from my introduction, and then I am from Otako, this particular area, and I actually live out that way too, um, way out at Harrington Point, so driving in today, I get to see those beautiful views that Naomi had on her um, picture at the front too. So um, why am I here? Because becoming a teacher means that we have to understand or undertake te uh, tiriti o waitangi, and um, understand how that applies in an educational practice. Because we have a treaty in this country, and how does that look, what does that look like in terms of partnerships and relationships in our schools and early childhood centres? And so when we become a teacher, we need to think about some of these values that you can see listed on the side of the PowerPoint here. So kaitiakitaka, um, that is using Kaitahu dialect or Naitahu dialect, which is the Reo Māori dialect for this particular region. So you may have heard of Kaitiakitanga, which is the other way, so we switch out the K and the NG. So Kaitiakitanga means that we become carers, we become guardians or stewardship of the areas that we are working in. So if you come to um, our Takura Ako Taitoka, which is Dunedin College of Education, you will be learning about this specific area. And when you learn about this particular area, we're showing you that you need to apply the same sorts of criteria or the same sorts of activities that you will do here anywhere that you teach. So if you are from China, for example, then you will learn about the context or the places where you are teaching in your own home places. Everywhere has indigenous peoples, so it's understanding the indigenous context of where you work. So there's some beautiful other ones there, I'm going to go really fast on those. Um, Ako is like for teaching and learning. We learn off our students. We aren't just the people standing up the top um, being directive, but our students teach us so many things. So sometimes they may be teaching you in the class as well. Really important for Nokutaka that we're going to look after our um, 
teachers that we work with, our colleagues, our students, our whānau members, our runaka, our hapu, our iwi, community members, we're going to treat them like we would, the best we would do for our own whānau members. Um, manaakitaka is another way of caring. Manaakitaka kare o roto is socio-emotional well-being. So nowadays with the world the way it is, how do we take care of ourselves? How do we build up resilience and resistance, but also stay strong and, and in order to support the people that we are working with? Tōwū is we're going to learn to listen. We're going to, it's reciprocal relationships. We're going to listen and learn um, alongside whoever we are working with. Takata whenua taka means that we're going to be looking at the local area which I've mentioned. Each of those values interconnect. And so teachers uh, learn those kinds of values in any uh, teacher education space from now on. And if you don't understand or know those particular values before you arrive, don't worry. We're going to um, work with you on those and teach you those kinds of things when you're here. That's part of the course and that's what we do. Kia ora. Kia ora, Rachel. Awesome. So for those people um, who are online uh, from uh, Pacific Islands, um, uh, I should start with Talofalava, given it's uh, more in language week. Uh, kia ora na maloelele bula vanaka. Uh, what else? Have I missed one? Uh, probably. There are more. There are more. <laughs> Cause specific regions. More specific regions, but that's a good start. But also... Um, one of the things we do focus is on is, is that even though we have a bicultural partnership with Māori, we have a really special affinity with Pacific peoples. Um, and you'll notice on the, on the right-hand side of the slide, I thought I was being a bit clever there, <laughs> and the carver bowls. So um, we believe that if we all learn, whether, whether or not you've got Pacific students in your class, that some of the Pacific Islands values of... Um, so collectivism and um, that, that idea of the shared journey and relationships is some very similar values to what Rachel talked about in Te Ao Māori. And so those are really special. Um, in addition to that, there could be all sorts, so some of these values and promoting that in your community, in your classroom, and your world is really important and it's why people get into teaching. We've actually asked some of our, our students generally are also the other reasons they get into teaching and so this is a, um, actually a, a, this is actually a product of a statistical analysis, um, and so the bigger the word, the um, the bigger the um, the number of times people said it. So make a difference. People become teachers because they want to make a difference. You'll notice a job satisfaction. Um, you also notice in the news every day there's talking about um, today, especially in the I think it was the North Island today there was rolling strikes, and I, I'm not going to be afraid to mention those around um, teachers wanting more pay. Despite that, um, teachers love the jobs and have good job satisfaction in general so because they've got passion, and you'll notice that one coming through. It's a vocation as well as a um, career, um, as well as a, a job to do. So it's all about changing our worlds, and you can see, I can't quite see, I might be getting a little old, Rachel. Yeah, I know, it's up there. So you can see some of the other reasons what people, um, people write down about why they want to become teachers. We are passionate. So we've got some speakers tonight that are going to tell you about why they wanted to become teachers and, and to hopefully share that passion. So not only do we think you should become a teacher, we think you should become a teacher with us at the University of Otago, Te Kura Ako Taituka. So um, that we are the oldest um, initial teacher education provider in New Zealand, and we were established in 1876. So um, that doesn't mean we are staid or old-fashioned. We are actually quite jiggy with it, I think you'll find. Um, in fact, we, we are one of the top 100 providers in the world. Um, so we are very proud of what we do here. And we are very well known um, across New Zealand um, and actually possibly in other places as well for being a good, good provider of initial teacher education. And one of the reasons that we think we're so good is because we offer such good support to our students. And that is that manakitanga, manakitaka that Rachel was talking about. Um, the sense of community created through this course is exceptional. I smile when I read these quotes because they're from... Um, 
This is us sitting around one day and asking a group of students, and when I see these names, I smile because I've shared many hugs with these people, not because they said these things, but because we actually build a relationship with them. Um, so so it's, um, we were given so many, Lyra says we were given so many chances to build relationships with each other, the lecturers and students. Um, it's a mix of theory and practice in terms of your learning in the classroom, then you go, learning in our classes, and, and then you go out to schools and early childhood centres um, and apply it into the class. Um, and also, we support your growth, and some of the students that are going to talk tonight may not know this, we help you write CVs, we help you with your cover letters, we really, um, we help you belong to the community of teachers because you are our colleagues already. So we really do support you all the way through. The employment statistics remain very high from our programs. Um, Rachel, would you like to talk a bit about this? Uh, so we so we often we offer specific. Well, as you can see from the photos, Kia ora no, that's why I stayed up here. Um, so there is one person who's not here anymore, but you see the rest of those people in the photo, and in fact, one person sitting right down in front of me here, Michael, um, our uh, Kaiafina Māori and Pacifica. And so when you talked about Manakitaka and looking after our students and becoming colleagues, we really mean that. So we have a, um, a whare called Te Whare Ropi, which te whare, the Ropi part is bringing people together. So it's for Māori and Pacifica students who come in and you can grab a cup of, cup of coffee. You can have um, a study time in there. It's warm and it's inviting. There's places to um, meet each other, greet. And some of our students got together and have a Te Reo Māori session on a Monday to practice what they have been learning in their classes. That's our um, master's group. Uh, Waiata sessions, actually our staff join in on a Wednesday morning staff and students and we practice um, songs that we need to uh, sing for other occasions so if I say at the moment just today we were having another meeting and we found out a, about a, an important person to us called Baba Thompson who is from the Invercargill region who passed away so we learn and this can happen in our teaching careers that very important people our whānau members can pass so we're you know we're gearing ourselves and getting ourselves ready to be part of our communities and support people in more than just one way in the classroom so um, yeah study skills and support really important so we have the Māori Centre Tukumatauraka which is part of the university which can which can help out our students as well and these lovely people who are called kaiafina which means they will help and support you as you go through and we have little activities and get togethers um, shared kai uh, as we go through there's the picture, isn't it? There we go. Thank you. I knew it was coming up, so that's why I talked about it. So there's the picture of the room, and there's us. If you, you can't see, identify people in there, but we're in the room, and we have a speaker at the beginning of the year where we introduce all those services that I just briefly talked about now. Uh, and, yeah, so you get looked after. That's why we have those values at the start. There you go. Got it, Rachel. It's all good. Oh, this is a picture. This is us up our um, marae noho we go on, so everyone um, has an opportunity to go on an overnight stay at um, various marae's around. Um, oh, yep, go, yep. yep. So we've got Otako, Pukitaraki, yeah, which is my marae, uh, Pukitaraki, and we go over to Moiraki, for those of you who know the region. And then if you're from further south in an in Invercargill area, the, um, there's several marae down that way as well, which people have the opportunity to stay there if they're at our other campus, which you'll find out about very soon too. And I just suddenly realised, is anyone here from Invercargill? I forgot to ask that. No? In the Vegas, probably online. Vicargo. In the Vegas, hello. Um, what about Central Otago? Yeah, no, no. Queenstown, Westport, Reefton, no. Okay, Gore. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. You're good. You're good. All good. Okay. So, and the other thing the wider university offers is support, for specific support for international students. Um, so uh, there, there's a really good supportive place on campus to go and get that really special support for people who are operating outside their home country. So we're now going to talk, there's two main qualifications um, that you can do to become a teacher. 
and I'm not going to talk about them much because I'm going to see what comes out and then we can add in bits at the end. So there's the Bachelor of Teaching, which is a three-year undergraduate degree. I, that is a wonderful way to start your teaching career, a lot, and it means it's a real point of difference because a lot of universities now only offer a one-year option after a degree. But this one is a degree in teaching. It's three years, 120 days in the classroom or the early childhood centre before you get your qualification. It is an excellent option. Um, whether you've got a degree or not, actually, I'd consider it. But it actually, it's for most people who may not have a degree, they'll start with a three-year undergraduate programme. And that's offered in Dunedin and Invercargill at our Invercargill Muruhiku campus. And then the other option is go away and do a degree, or you might already have a degree, um, or you might have some experience that, um, that might be a a diploma or something like that, then do come and talk to us about that because there are some alternatives on very specialised cases options for um, if you don't have that level seven qualification, so do get hold of us. So the Master of Teaching and Learning, for most people, they've got a level seven bachelor degree. Some even have PhDs and come and do this, so we've had several PhDs come through um, and master's degrees and things like that, but it's a postgraduate initial teacher ed qualification you're getting a master degree in one year, which again is quite unusual. Generally, it's 18 months or two years for a master's degree, but there's no such thing as a free lunch. It starts, and Ben's nodding. Yeah, that's right. So it starts mid-January and finishes in mid-December. So it's the same as a sort of school year, but um, most university courses go from like end of February to October, so people get a, whoa, sort of like taking the two summer schools. Um, and it's Six compulsory papers are worth 30 points each. So we all know A, B, and 30 times six is 180. Um, and so then you get 80 days of that school year out in schools or early childhood centres. So it's really, um, um, well, I'll talk a little bit about secondary for a moment because Ben hasn't done this yet because he's going to talk for secondary. For example, in secondary we have a principal's day where over 50 principals come from all around the country and are recruiting. So it's a really, um, and I had a principal come from Hamilton a couple of years ago at Otatuna High School, and she said, I need 19 teachers. I said, well, mate, we've only got 60 in the program, so <laughs> you can have a third of them if you like. So uh, that's the sort of um, employment opportunities there. It depends a little bit on subjects and things like that, um, but there really are excellent employment opportunities. So that's the, and you can do that in early childhood. I'll actually give this a little bit more. So you can do the Master of Teaching and Learning in secondary, um, primary, and early childhood. And then the Bachelor of Teaching you can do in early childhood and primary. Um, there's also two, another option of the primary bicultural program. That is a three year Bachelor of Teaching that runs out of Invercargill. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. So. You knowing what sector you want to go to now makes a difference. Um, so when you do your application, if you state what sector you want to do, that will mean your application is not held up in any way. So I suggest before you apply, you know what sector you're applying for or give us a ring and talk us through that. If you gave us a ring and talked us through that, the thing we would suggest you to do is to just ring up a local early childhood centre, a school, kura, whatever you want, primary or secondary, early childhood, and actually say, can I come and spend a day in your school if you're not really sure? So it's particularly for those people who might already be in school, they say, there is no way I want to be a secondary school teacher, honey. <laughs> there is no way. And, but you need to probably go and see another school because you think you know what secondary school teaching is all about. Um, and, and don't assume primary teaching primary teaching might have changed quite a lot in the five years since you were there. So, so do spend that time to choose that sector really carefully and, and with real good conscience. So we're going to talk, I'm going to hand enough talking from me, we're going to talk about early childhood education and we are going to start with the lovely Jessica, kia ora Jessica. So Jessica's here from, um, she's studying the Bachelor of Teaching in Early Childhood. Now would you prefer, how about this? Yeah? You go for it. Do you want to uh, stand here? Because I'm yeah. um, not casting aspersions <laughs> on anything, but can you see it from here? Yeah, okay. Right. 
A uh, tina kato katoa ko taki temu te moka ko waiho pai te awa ko uh, ko ote pote toku a uh, kainga um, no waiho pai aho ko Jessica Fairbairn toku ikua. So I basically came f straight from Invercargill um, to Dunedin, fresh out of high school in 2021 to study a Bachelor of Early Childhood Education. Um, so yeah, I'm currently in my third year. So I guess I always kind of wanted to do ECE. My mum's a primary school teacher, has been since I was about three. I still remember going into, she was in Invercargill, still remember going into Teachers College with her a few times. Um, but yeah, that kind of influenced me. And then as I got up in the school system, I had my own struggles with it. And I was like, this is not what I want for teaching. And so I decided that I wanted to make a difference, like what's already kind of been discussed earlier, um, is that I wanted to make a difference, have my voice heard a little bit. I'm really passionate about early childhood and I intend to go a long way with it. Um, but yeah, well, so kind of what stood out to me was the um, play-based, it's a play-based curriculum. So although many people will say like, oh, you're just babysitters, that's not at all what we are. We do just as much teaching as primary school and secondary school. I would argue maybe even more. Um, we do have to do like nappy changes and stuff like that, but that's not... That's not really what it's about. It's about, um, so this year especially, we've been learning about how um, we're teaching so much science and maths and stuff, like even in the sandpit, making sandcastles, that's measuring, that's maths. So yeah, that's kind of why I was passionate about it and why I kind of joined. And also like at Otago Uni, I came here and was really introverted, really shy, um, I had had one one day experience of early childhood teaching from high school. I um, the careers department got me to go into a centre for a day. That was it. <laughs> I just kind of had a feeling that I wanted to do early childhood, and um, so yeah. And then I'm so much more confident now. I go into my placement, say hi to all the children, say hi to all the whanau, um, have really strong relationships and stuff. And I guess a big part of that has been our lecturers. They're very supportive, like Michael. He teaches us a lot this year. Um, and he's my visiting lecturer as well. So they always, <laughs> they're always here to um, support us. And I think like all of my class and the other years could agree with that. Um, I won't tell you how much I've spent, how much time I've spent complaining in their offices about assignments. Um, and also, so we've learned so much about culture as well. I'm Pākehā, so I didn't really, um, I was kind of of that generation, I didn't really learn a lot about, um, about te ao Māori and te reti o Waitangi and that sort of how important it is really at primary school. I know the year after me, I think it started to become more a thing. Um, yeah, I learned nothing about it. No te reo Māori, obviously learned how to say like kia ora and stuff, but that's about it. Um, I have learned so much since then. Um, I've learned, yeah, all about keeping how important mana is and keeping the wairoa high for tamariki and stuff like that. And yeah, and we even got to, as was mentioned before, um, we got to go to the Marae this year, um, just a few months ago actually for the other night and it was incredible. It was amazing um, and such an eye-opening experience, I think. And so you'll have that to look forward to hopefully. And Amy's not here at the moment, but she's um, she's taught us a lot. And even me, like I said before, I'm Pākehā, but I've learned about my own culture as well and having that sort of identity like my ancestors. I'm pr I've learned to be proud of them as well. They came over from Ireland and they didn't know what they were doing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I've learned not to be too guilty and be proud of it and embrace Tao Māori. So that's kind of... I, so that's like one of the most important aspects of our early childhood course in Dunedin. But yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Kia ora. Kia ora.
No mai hari mai, uh, tauti mai, uh, ki te kura a katoa toka. Uh, ko Michael toko ingoa. Um, so, as Jessica said, uh, I'm one of the teaching team for the Early Childhood uh, Program. Uh, there's a small group of uh, four or five of us. And, uh, yeah, we, we think the Early Childhood's got something to offer, both for uh, children and uh, for the students. Um, in uh, particular, I think for Jessica, if you'd seen her in the first year and asked her to come up here and talk like this, uh, she would have been running a mile <laughs> very quickly. Uh, but uh, you know, she's done a wonderful job um, to overcome some of those nerves and share with you uh, some of the things that she's found important. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing about um, finding your place in the world. And what you're doing when you're with children under five uh, is seeing them work out their place in the world. Uh, the joy of it, of course, is that you can do that in the sand pit. Or this morning, as I was uh, reading lots of books, uh, as I was visiting another student, but the, you know, the, the children see a spare adult around the place and say, oh, that's cool, I'll, I'll get them to um, play with us. Uh, so I, I quite enjoy uh, visiting because uh, early childhood, I think, is the place to be. Um, and if you're uh, wondering, um, as was suggested before, to go and visit a place, and they're all quite different, and it makes it a bit um, tricky because you go to one and realise you go to another, and they've, they've changed again. Um, but to, to have that feel... Now, some people, um, they, they walk into early childhood settings and they just see chaos. Uh, there's not enough structure to the day. And they go, what are these children all about? And where's the learning happening? Um, and that's part of what this course uh, does, is to uh, highlight where the learning is happening within the play. So it's not just all play, and or as Jessica says, it's not about babysitting, but there's learning happening, uh, important learning. Uh, so, yeah, check those uh, opportunities you might get uh, to find out what's happening. Talk with others, if you know um, people who are currently out in settings, uh, to see what they think. Uh, so, yes, if you do like the chaos, you do like the under fives, a uh, bit of noise, uh, but lots of singing, um, yeah, come and uh, ask more questions. We're always happy to, to chat. I'll, I'll stop there. Um, got, to let, got to let others uh, have a go. Uh, maybe some folk from primary would like to. Yeah. Kia ora. And uh, just to be clear that you can learn early childhood education both here in Dunedin and in Invercargill. And um, it's a pretty... I don't know if you've been listening to the media lately, but the government is now going to provide more um, funding for people over two um, rather than just people over three. So there's a real shortage of early childhood teachers. So please consider it and help the nation. <laughs> so um, now we have primary education, and we'll ask um, uh, Nelia... Nelia? Nelia. Nelia. I knew that to come up. Kia ora. Um, before I do my mahi, I was just going to say I have pre-written my speech. I will try to uh, go by it, but sometimes that may not happen. Um, ko kapuka, tomahaka te maunga, ko le te awa, uh, no utiputi aho, ko nalea toku ikua. So kia ora, my name is Nalea and I am my third year at college. I am 20 years old and I'm currently on placement at McAndrew Bay School, which is epic. I love it down there. And so I was born in Dunedin to my parents and one of which, who was a teacher. So people have always asked me my entire life, did this inspire you? Didn't it put you off? And yes and no, I discovered more that I wanted to do teaching through my love of dance. So I've been a dancer my whole life and I began to teach children dance, and I kind of realised that it sparked this interest in me that I actually wanted to pursue teaching because I had no idea what I wanted to do until year 13. So that was a big moment for me, realising what I wanted to do. And, I mean, I did go into my mum's class uh, a lot in year 13 and year 12, which did help me to realise it's what I wanted to do. So I just wanted to explain to you why you should be a teacher, why primary, and a little bit of why Otago. And I'll try to be as quick as I can so you don't listen to me for too long. So, <clears throat> why you should become a teacher. So, as a teacher, and currently for me, it's the connections with students uh, 
that see me or any other teacher as a person of importance. So they come in every morning and you're having these conversations and like building these relationships, which are honestly unforgettable. And it really opens your eyes to how awesome they are and that they are actually really trying their best and that no matter what's going on in their life, they're coming in, they're like talking to you and they're like seeing you as this role model. And it's actually really inspiring to sit there knowing that they're looking at you as like this person that is like, I'm going to look up to you and everything you say, I'm going to try and, you know, abide by. That doesn't always happen, but they do try. And I think as well, it's just having an impact on their life. Like you watch them grow, especially in third year with being at one school all year. Um, and it just makes it all seem worth it, like just being there every day. So, and having that impact on them, that, that path to success. And it just really makes being a teacher worth it like I just love it and I couldn't see myself doing anything else like it's just I cannot explain to you it's just it comes naturally to people and it's come as like a really natural thing to me and so being a teacher is just so awesome and seeing these kids and inspiring them is just so awesome so <clears throat> why primary teaching so I wrote down here about it's re uh, incredibly rewarding and fulfilling for us and the students. I mean, so at that age, at this age, I think, yeah, ages one to eight, well, years, years one to eight, they are so enthusiastic. Anything that I start to teach them currently, they're like, yes, we're doing it. We want to do it. We're going to learn. They ask questions. They're exploring ideas. Like, I currently have year six students, and they are so curious. They want to get on the Chromebooks and start researching and finding out about things. They don't kind of just sit there and stare at me blankly, wondering what I'm talking about because they are at this age where they're just so amazing and get into it. And like even today when I was just giving them challenges for maths, they were so into it and it makes me so happy that seeing what I have planned for them is something that they love. So I feel like at this age they just can get into it and they're awesome and they just have this space of being almost safe to them, like coming to school, knowing that I'm there for them in this age. Like, I cannot explain how awesome it is teaching um, primary school students. And then I just wrote on here about why Otago. So if you live, live in Dunedin or the Dunedin area or anywhere close, it makes sense to come here. And as well, like the staff who have been teaching us for the last three years are so amazing, so supportive. Like, I don't think I would have been here without half of all of the staff actually like they're just amazing so that's definitely like a huge bonus to coming here and it means that for me personally I've been able to stay in Dunedin with my family but also make friends and meet new people who aren't from Dunedin while finishing my degree in the place that I love so I mean there's just so many positives and I don't think I could talk about it forever so I'm going to stop now and hand it over to Andrea because I could speak forever so I'm going to stop. You can just hear the passion, can't you? And so from um, someone that's literally in the beginning of their career to someone that's been teaching for 26 years, I still feel just as passionate about it and welcome, and it really is the most rewarding job ever. Um, my name is Andrea Robertson. I'm the primary program coordinator, and I get to teach students like um, Nalia um, music, dance, um, literacy, and uh, lots of other things. So one thing I love about primary is you get to bring your passions, your areas of interest. If sport's your thing, if music's your thing, if science is your thing, we get to share that every day with the students in our class. And we get to teach a little bit of everything, which is pretty awesome. Uh, as um, Nilia said, we, in primary we're um, year one to eight, and ages five to 13. You can, it's a you know, nice broad, um, place to come into. So I've taught middles, or actually seniors, middles and juniors. I really love that middle age group. In our primary program we've got about 300 students and we know every single one of them by name. So it's for, for myself I love the fact that we've got a big group of students but we do get to know them well. We work with them in first, second and third year in the BTEACH program. Um, over that time you get five different placements, so you're out in schools for two placements in first year, two placements in second year, and then in third year you're out in the same school for the whole year. And I think Naomi mentioned earlier it's 120 days, so you, 
yes, you're in at college learning and doing the theory, you're doing education papers, curriculum, professional studies, but you're out in schools for 120 days as well, which is always the highlight, <laughs> I think, of, of your time at college. Um, it really is, I mean, it's been mentioned about that chance to make a difference, um, but it is an amazing um, career to get into and as mentioned we our job isn't over until you're in a job at the end and so we help all of our students with CV writing applying for jobs practicing for interviews and from our third years last year every single one of them is out teaching that wanted to be out teaching so we have a great um, you know turnover of people doing their study here and then heading out into those jobs that they want I'm now going to hand over, is that correct to go on to this one? Oh, um, so part of our um, primary programme is the fact that our students can study catechetical studies and Katie's going to talk about that. Kia ora koutou, ko Katie Montgomery tohuku ikua and I am the coordinator here at the College of Education for Catechetical Studies and what that is is some additional study that students who are a part of the Bachelor of Teaching in Primary can take on alongside their degree and it is to prepare them to teach in Catholic or other integrated schools. So it, gives, it helps them develop the knowledge, skills and attitudes and also learning how to teach religious education as well. And a part of this involves um, some mentoring through me and um, working alongside me over the three years, um, lots of practical workshops and also the option to take on one to two theology papers as well to enhance your understandings to be able to teach religious education. Each year we have around 10 to 15 students that join in a part of the program and they work together as a really um, close group and they love the relationships they build as a group but also they get to build it along with um, the first years, second years and third years meet together lots. And additional to that too, students get to have um, at least one placement in a Catholic school where they get to practice their school skills and learn about on site lots of the things they've been learning in regards to prayer, special character and teaching religious education. Um, and another thing I want to share too is the Dunedin Catholic Diocese have set up scholarships for people that are wanting to join in catechetical studies and these are $6,000. So uh, the email is up here, catstudies.otago.ac.nz. If you're interested in learning more, please contact me for more information and if you're interested in finding out more about the scholarships and the criteria for them, please contact, either see me after this, I've got information with me, but um, please contact this email and I can send out some information to you. Thank you. Jane Tilson Naho. Um, it's my privilege always to work in the Masters Programme, and it really is a remarkable programme where people come to us with an undergrad degree, and that degree can be anything at all, which brings the cohort and makes them very interesting. Um, so our students are slightly older, often very, very committed, which is quite an important quality. And they're just finishing right now, tomorrow actually, their very first big block in a school. So they've been in a school since February, on a number of Wednesdays, and then for six weeks. You'll be knowing this, a secondary student sitting here. And it's just such a privilege to be part of that journey. I really can't say it enough. Um, they sort of start, some of them not from ground zero, because they've been teacher aides and they've done all sorts of other things, but some of them, yes, they arrive in a school and it's just quite a new environment that they're having to navigate, find their way around. And I just am so proud of them, um, just amazing. I work at the Valley with them and North East Valley Primary and I cannot believe how they've flourished and grown in the last six weeks and just from their planning, their relationships with students and whānau has just been amazing and then the great excitement, I sat with a few of them this afternoon and they did their professional conversations which is this amazing 
assessment, um, a very authentic form of assessment that we use with them, where they present their evidence of how they've met the learning outcomes for the paper. And it's just such a celebration. And what really excited me today was that they were talking about how they'd shifted students' learning. And that is just what teaching is all about. And they did it with such um, real grace and knowledge of, you know, in science, how they taught a whole lot of things about how sound works with six-year-olds. And I actually saw their summative assessment for their unit, and it was just such a celebration. So I cannot recommend the Masters enough if you are somebody who's committed. You've looked in a school, you've been back, and you've sat in a staff room, and you thought, right, this is for me. And um, I really do promise you an amazing journey. It is really a full-on ride um, from very, very early in January. Rachel's nodding at me right through till mid-December. So it's a long year, but there are some breaks as well. That's very important to know. They've got two weeks off soon for the school holidays, and then they'll come back. And um, I work with Helen, and we'll place them in a second school, yes, and they, they'll tell us which age group they'd like to do. And so they leave us having had 80 days in schools, and they generally all win jobs. Dunedin can be tricky, I'll be honest about that, um, but I think people do know that in Dunedin. So um, we've got a large group that... Um, Helen Trevathan and I are tracking in a research project who went to Auckland. A number of our students do go to the North Island and win really successful jobs. I think there's quite a cohort up of the Masters graduates now, and I'm sure secondary is the same. So it's just an amazing journey, and um, if you are somebody who's got a degree and has thought about this for a long time, now's your moment. So, and that you'll shortly hear how to apply. So... Kia ora. So, thanks Jane. Um, we've talked about the programs that we offer up here in Dunedin, but we also have a really special program that we offer only in Invercargill um, to Pōkai, which is our primary biocultural teacher education program. It is the only one in New Zealand. I think we're very proud of what we offer here. I'm looking at Rachel as I go to make that claim. We'll just say that that's the way it goes. But we're really proud. We have an amazing educator, Parker Ormond, who is um, one of the key teachers in the Tupoko program. Um, so if you've got an interest in Te Ao Māori um, and potentially going into um, full immersion settings or bilingual settings, this particular three-year degree could be um, right up your alley. So if you're wanting to find out more, we've got more information. Kia ora. So, quite complicated really, isn't it? So let's have, a, let's have a little summarise here. So you can do early childhood as a B teaching, Bachelor of Teaching for three years, and you can do that in Invercargill or Dunedin, or you can do early childhood as a master's degree one year in Dunedin, or you can do primary teaching as a three year in Dunedin, or you can do primary teaching as a three-year in Vicargill, or, and, you can do primary teaching with an add-on extra study in catechetical studies. Let's pause for a minute. Can you say catechetical? Let's have a go. Catechetical. Catechetical. So you can add on catechetical studies. How's that on your CV? Or you can add on, you can go to Invercargill and do primary bicultural teaching. Quite a lot of options. Have I missed any? Oh my gosh. Or you can do, uh, do a golf under a degree and do primary masters. Wow, that's quite good. And didn't Jane sell that well? Or, <laughs> or secondary is very simple. You can only do it one way, and you can only do it in um, Dunedin. You can do it in other places around New Zealand, of course, but I'd suggest New Zealand, uh, Dunedin's a fairly good place to do it. And you can only do it after a degree as a Master's of Teaching and Learning one year. So um, the, um, I'm going to let Ben talk now, who is fresh from school today, still in his school clothes, and he has been teaching at my old school, and then I'll pick up what he's missed out and have a chat about secondary two because Ian McGillcrest is not here. So, over to you, Ben. You'll need a microphone. I 
And you're such a quiet person that perhaps you need to be very careful about holding it close to you. He has done speech and drama for years, this lad. He'll be fine. Oh, geez, don't give me too much of a sell. Um, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, you, you do you. So I you guess for you. the master's course, probably one of the questions of people, or one of the questions that people would have if you're going to the stage is where's the moment that you make the decision that you want to go into your Masters of Teaching? And for me personally, I was sitting a exam end of the year and I thought, I'm not passionate about this. I finished out my degree and I decided to do a wee bit of work. I worked with early childhood, I worked at a boarding house with secondary kids, I got to experience a variety of kids at a variety of different stages. And for the master's course, I couldn't recommend that enough. If you can get into schools, definitely do. Give yourselves the best opportunity to make the best decision and pick a master's course. Now, the master's course, like, I've preached it for the whole year. I've preached it in my classroom. Your cohort's a community. Your classroom's a community. And in my cohort, being the master's course, you have such an array of different people. And I feel very grateful for the five months now that we've been together, that there have actually been some well, outstanding people that I could safely say I'd hope would be lifelong friends. Also, looking at the course, you have 80 days in a classroom. And I think this is probably one of the questions that I would have had going into it. How the heck do you go in front of a classroom especially secondary, they'll probably know more than me about something, they'll undermine you about something. I look at it, you get into a classroom, and I believe that the kids can tell when you go up in front that as a teacher, you kind of command a bit of a presence. And it's not just you standing there, it's your staff standing there with you, it's the rest of your cohort standing with you, and it's the schools that you're with are standing with you. So when I look at the secondary course so far, and I think back to that moment where I sat in an exam and I thought, hmm, this isn't for me. And I think about that decision of doing a certificate of proficiency before going into my master's course. I think it was actually one of the better choices that I did make. And if you're umming and ahhing, take the dive. If you're passionate about education, if you're passionate about people, I couldn't think of a better profession to be in. So why wait? Apply and go secondary. I'm quite loud enough as it is, but given that we've got... So another way, given that Ian McGilchrist is not here, um, my background is secondary. So just to tell you a little bit about me and my decisions around it, I um, didn't start with teaching. <laughs> I started in the smelter in Invercargill um, on the end of a broom um, for, for quite some time um, and slowly I moved up to working a machine in the, in the smelter and so t uh, teaching is actually my second career um, and I simply chose, chose teaching because it suited my husband couldn't get a job in Invercargill and I had to have a job so I went teaching without a particular if, I don't know if I would have done very well in an interview because I didn't go and they go, oh, I've been passionate about teaching all my life. It was like, yeah, I really need a job in this area. But I went teaching and I didn't look back. It was great fun. Um, on the end of a broom was fun too, let's be honest. But teaching was great and I never looked back. So I've taught in a variety of places. Um, I've taught overseas in an international school, so there's lots of opportunities for things like that. I was in the Sultanate of Amman for four years, unfortunately during the Arab Spring, but that's another story I'll tell you next year. Um, so there was all sorts of reasons why teaching was really, really good for me at the time. Um, and so secondary teaching, it's, um, I've mostly taught year 11 to 13. For those people that are overseas, that's sort of 15 to 18 year olds. I'm a mathematics teacher, you can probably tell. There's a, we've sort of got that look, I think. Um, don't you think? Nah. <laughs> anyway, and so I taught mathematics um, in a variety of secondary schools all around the country and the world. And I am like Ben, go secondary, it's great. But actually it's not a competition, go education. It's um, just a fantastic option for, for a career. Um, 
I don't think I'll add much more at that stage. I will talk a little bit about, we'll have lots of time for questions in a little while. If you are interested in secondary, you actually, and you're still in your degree or nearing the end of the degree, or you did a degree years ago, um, planning your degree or planning what subject you're going to do is really important. So Ben, you do from memory English history and social studies? There's only 72 of them, sometimes I get them confused. Um, so, so, um, so Ben does an, a, a, a combination of English history and social studies. You might do a combination of, you might just be pure mathematics and not do anything else because that's a full program. So it's quite complex. Um, if you're interested in secondary, there's a really important um, uh, thing about how to design your degree around your subjects at the back of this. If you're online, um, it's on the College of Education website, and that's really important to, um, to do a little bit more planning. It's a bit more complex. We've only got one option for studying secondary, but we can make it complex too. <laughs> um, so let's get on to applying. You, the apl application dates are actually quite early. If you want to do a Master of Teaching and Learning, they're actually due by the end of July. If you want to do a Bachelor of Teaching, that's a three-year one, they're due at the end of August. So there's an, if you go online to the College of Education website or just Google Teaching Otago, you'll get the Apply Now button. That's the bit you click, all right? Um, some people, um, this is going to be recorded, I think, and some, yes, this is being recorded. So some people might be watching this and it's after July the 31st or August the 31st. Don't despair. We do accept late applications um, so um, under certain conditions. So don't despair if you're listening to this late. Um, we actually accept them all the way through for another couple of months, so that's absolutely fine. Make contact with us and ask us if you're not sure. Um, you need for the Bachelor of Teaching University entrance, so that's your basic qualification when you leave school, um, and or if you're doing the MTeach, as I said before, a level seven bachelor degree or approved equivalent. Um, you need a disposition to teach, and I think the student speakers today um, have really shown you that they have a disposition to teach, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, Ben talked about a classroom presence. Um, I will say, though, that not everyone's an extrovert when you're a teacher. Students really enjoy teachers who are more measured, more quiet. Just like there are all sorts of students, there are all sorts of teachers. So when we talk about a disposition to teach, we're evidencing that through your involvement in your community, cultural sporting. Um, we're going to give you an interview. We ask for two referee reports. Um, so if you're already a Year 13 student, that might be um, uh, uh, someone at your school, the, the dean of your, your year level, or it might be an employer. If you haven't been at school for a number of years, it could be an employer or things like that. Be very careful and don't say, my referee is a very close family friend. Okay, that's a really common thing. And if you've already written that, don't worry, we'll ask you if we want more. But a very close family friend, we need someone who might be, um, you know, someone else in the community that you're in um, that can really um, justify and, and give evidence of why they think you should be a teacher. So if it's a close family friend, um, that's not quite such a strong referee. So choosing really good referees are important. Um, and we'll tell you if we say, look, we need another one. Um, I remember once getting, I'm the sister's husband, or, you know, the husband's sister or something. It would be the husband's sister, I suppose, not the sister's. Hmm, could be. Okay. Um, so what happens then is you, you apply, and then we do a round of interviews. We actually don't do them probably, it's more August, September that we do the interviews, um, and, and some are even through to October. So don't despair. It's, that's just how long the process takes. But then after that, we can... Um, um, either say you're, um, you're welcome to accept and you've been offered a place or there may be, um, if, if, if you're deemed eligible for the program and you're accepted at interview. So the interview takes about 20 minutes, uh, between 20 minutes and half an hour, and you're generally interviewed with um, one of our staff plus someone from the community. It could be a principal, deputy principal, early childhood centre manager, so someone from the community as well. Um, it's not super formal. 
On the other hand, please don't wear jeans with holes in them. Even if they're the coolest holes that have cost more than the, the denim that would have been where if there was no holes. Like, they could be the coolest denim in the world, but wearing holy jeans is a no-no. So you're dressing professional, okay? Teacher tip 101, you shouldn't be able to see it up it, down it, or through it. <laughs> That's an old, old up it, down it, or through it. So dress professional, um, don't come with your hoodie up and things like that. So you are presenting yourself and you're honouring yourself, your whānau, your fr you know, you are there representing you and your, your whānau. So try and think about what you'd wear in a professional situation. Um, you don't have to be super flash. We know that uh, students don't earn heaps and heaps, but just present yourself tidy. Um, that's, that's really important. Um, but of course, it's far, that's a superficial thing in a way. It's all about um, who you are, um, talking about, um, it might be that you have had some, so look for opportunities to talk about, have you ever coached a sports team? Have you done some volunteer work? Um, and so you've got a bit of time between now and the interview um, to, to think about opportunities. So you could, um, for example, ring up the local primary school or high school and say, I'd like to be involved in the school show, or can I help to coach a netball team? Can I do some tutoring? Can I help at a local um, play centre? There's all sorts of ways you can get involved in the community. And we'll be wanting to hear about those things. Surf life saving, gymnastics coaching, uh, helping out at Marae, for, you know, all sorts of things. Um, we're really interested in doing it. There's a whole lot of, um, I was going to say hoops you have to jump. Is it hoops you have to jump in? Hoops you have to jump? Through? You have to jump through hoops? Yes. We have to attest that you're a suitable children's worker in New Zealand, and that is um, around the law. Um, so um, we need to do police vetting, things like that. If you have a reason you're worried about police vetting, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a no-go. It means it comes to a panel and we, we agree that you can continue. So it's, um, it's a process that you need to do. Um, we need to get your referees to attest that we believe that you are suitable to look after children. Um, there's all sorts of things like that, but it, 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 you'll move through it. At any time, you're so welcome to email us, and the um, email is on there. Just say, hey, I'm a little bit worried, I haven't heard. We really encourage you to email us to keep us going and make sure that um, you're on track. I so do. Plus ID checks. There's a couple of more things around, um, firstly, um, there's an ID check that you need to do at various times during it as part of the police check and things like that. So you need to think about, um, even when you come for your interview, um, and you know, 99% of the time we'll interview everyone who applies, so it, if you're eligible. Um, so um, if you can bring along your passport or um, a... Um, an ID with your address on it, and it'll tell you what you need to bring. And I think bring it early as you can, that's really important, but it will, it will tell you at the right stage. But the interview is not a bad idea to actually get, go to the Ask Otago desk and ask them, can you look at my interview, can you look at my ID now and maybe make a note of it? Um, and the other thing I want to say is at interview, and I'm saying this very carefully, we are very proud at Otago. One of the reasons we are amazing is that we graduate numerate and literate graduates. So we want teachers who are in our classrooms, our kaiako, who are literate and numerate. And that means we assess you at entry. Now, that sounds scary. We're giving you a maths test when we interview you. I know that sounds a bit scary, but actually it's reasonable. Um, uh, it's probably around a year nine-ish level of mathematics and we talk about, we screen you in terms of your literacy, in terms of your so reading comprehension and short essay um, and so we, we take into account that you know English might not be your first language, things like that so there, there's d different things you need to do for, for that criteria. Um, so this is not, this is a screening thing more than an assessment, if you like. So it's, it's 
uh, you're welcome to contact us if you want some more information, but there's some information on the website as well. So um, just to make you aware of that, anything else about the application process? Ben? I really can't stress it enough. I had a delayed application go through a well put peace of mind, just send an email in, yep. the team will get back to you. It's usually, I think, in our interview, you complained about the bowels of the university. I didn't complain about the bowels of the university in our interview, did I, Ben? Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> um, but again, it is just following up on it. Yeah, so ben Ben's, all... I remember this actually, I interviewed Ben. It's my fault he's here. No. <laughs> so I interviewed Ben and his application, there was a delay and he had sent an email going, hey, and so we had to, um, there's the College of Education and then there's a whole admissions process. So I went into the rest of the university in the head of the university rather than the bowels, eh? <laughs> and I managed to find out what had happened to his application. So don't hesitate to send an email at any stage if you're worried. Good idea. Okay. So a couple of other things, we're looking for learning capability, solid academic results. We don't need you to be all A plus students. It's about, um, it could be that you didn't, might not have done well earlier and then you've shown growth, or it could be that, so we talk about things like that. For the M teaching, certainly, we're looking for normally a B average, but again, if you haven't quite got a B average, but you absolutely blow us out of the water at the interview, you know, there are, Contact us. Um, don't don't give up because we have. There are ways around things. It's or 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 approved equivalent. We're really interested. If if you ha don't know a lot about the Titiriti or Waitangi, I suggest that you find out a little bit about that and how it applies to schools or early childhood settings. In New Zealand, we are so incredibly privileged to have a bicultural nation, and this is something that we have talked about a lot tonight. And that's because it is an absolute gift. It is, it is such a privilege to be in this nation. So we want to make sure we uphold that. And because, remember, we're a transformative space. Um, an understanding of what teaching involves. So if you come along, oh, yeah, my mum was a teacher. Yeah, yeah, good holidays, eh? So, that's <laughs> so find out a little bit about what teaching looks like. For example, did you know that teachers plan before every lesson? They don't just turn up and go, oh, we're doing fractions today. Can't spell fraction without action. Let's go. So we actually, see, so that was funny. That was a maths joke, guys. Come on. Can't you tell? So you actually, you smiled a bit, Chris. <laughs> you smiled a bit. So you actually have to plan before you teach. So we teach you how to plan and all sorts of things like that. So there's all sorts of things there that you've read through now that I think are really important. There are scholarships. So there are scholarships. Now, Karahipi. So um, there are Teach and Z scholarships if you're a career changer. So anyone who's here that wants to change career, or if you've come with your daughter or son and you're thinking about teaching yourself after this talk, you can change a career, and there are scholarships around that. Uh, for te reo Māori, uh, if you're teaching, uh, interested in that, there's scholarships around there. There's early childhood scholarships and secondary. There's Cooper scholarships for Māori and Pacifica high achievers. High achievers, that's a very broad, um, depends on the definition of success, eh? So that's quite a broad definition there. Um, so check, we don't administer those scholarships ourselves, so the Teach NZ um, scholarship uh, website's really good for that. And there's other scholarships around um, Otago as well. So, so those are some scholarships. Most close on August the 15th. And it could be that you've applied for the scholarship and not heard back from us yet. Kate Pai, do it anyway. That's all good, and it'll all come out in the wash. Um, just before we go into questions, if you want to study education, so you might not be interested in teaching at all. You might come to this and go, mm, I'm not so sure. There's really good careers by studying education, so you might just want to study an education paper as part of your degree. You might want to study... Um, uh, an education paper as part of a BA, you can major in it as part of a Bachelor of Arts, um, or you might just want to do two or three papers. It goes really well with law, it goes really well with science, things like that. So you can always just study in education as part of your degree. You don't have to have studied education if you're interested in doing a Master of Teaching and Learning. So it's just an option there um, for just thinking about doing education papers rather than teaching. Um, and for those parents out there, 
could be that you just come and do one paper with us on education. Um, there's now an opportunity to ask questions. Um, if you're on a live stream, you can send a message um, to, to that um, Facebook group. But are there any questions from anyone here? Doesn't have to be. Or anything um, that the student speakers can think of that we haven't covered or things that you were surprised about, questions? The slides um, are available. I'm not sure how. <laughs> what I think happens, does Chris know? No, the slides are available. Yes. And we will put it on our Facebook page how they are available when I find out. <laughs> I've got a feeling last time I even, we, I even made it to YouTube last year. Yeah. So, good question. Are the slides available was the question. Yes, they are. I don't know how. We'll put it on our... Yeah, you can email me, but even better, I'll put it on the Facebook um, so that we can, we can do that. Good question. Any other questions? This is called awkward wait time. <laughs> Teachers learn how to do it. It's like this. Scanning the room, scanning the room. And then when you're a teacher, you slowly walk around, you slowly walk around, and you notice that someone's got their laptop open. Are they on trade me? Hmm. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Online shopping. <laughs> you learn all of those things about physical presence. Okay, keep the pie. We'll leave it there, and what we'll do is we'll end with, oh, are there any um, questions that have come through? No, that's fine. Okay, to pie. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, end with um, a... So there's some contact details, and I can leave that up on the screen afterwards. Um, we'll end with the karakia, because we started with one, and that nice um, book ended. Another photo of my beautiful Blue Skin Bay. And then we'll be up the front for you to ask individual questions, because I know that some of you might want to have a little bit more um, kōrero with people, talking with people about it. Um, and if people online want to ask individual questions, we'll answer them in the next day or so, because we're probably all going home for a cup of tea and a lie down after this. <laughs> okay, so etu, me too, and we'll do the karakia together. Kia, um, me karakia tato. Kia faka iria te tapu. Kia watea ai te ara. Kia tūruki whakataha ai. Kia tūruki whakataha ai. Ho mie, hu ye, taeke. So kia ora koutou everyone. Thank you for coming out on this dark and stormy, no it's not, warm and balmy night of Dunedin. It's winter time, it's 16 degrees. Um, and so welcome to come down and ask us questions, introduce yourselves, have a chat to the staff. Kia ora everyone. <laughs>